Hey, uh, everybody, good morning. I'm incredibly happy to be here. Um, I'm feeling the pressure because I'm standing between you and that shot of caffeine. Um, but um, so uh, I'm here to share some of our TV advertising expertise uh, with you. Um, if you don't know Tatari, uh, we are a data and analytics company um, uh, focused on uh, the measurement and buying of TV advertising. And of course, that's across both linear and streaming TV. Uh, we do so for uh, quite a few companies. Some of them are actually here today, like Row, Gravity Blankets, The Farmer's Dog, we just saw Brett speak. Uh, the IAB actually published a list of what they see as the 250 most disruptive direct-to-consumer brands just a few months ago. And if you look at that list, uh, of those who do TV advertising, uh, almost half, if not more than half, actually work with us. Uh, so it's something we're very proud of. We know the direct-to-consumer space well. But we actually also work with some of the bigger brands. For example, even Procter & Gamble will have some small parts in, uh, of their business uh, with us. Now, uh, my hunch is that you've seen presentations around TV advertising in the past, uh, maybe have sat into workshops. And if you pay attention, they always focus on the direct response performance of a campaign, the measurement of a campaign, metrics like cost per install, cost per sale, you name it. And so I, I kind of don't want to talk about that today. I want to take a different tack, and I kind of want to share some of our learnings and practices around scaling TV and even leading into the use of data and analytics to run a brand uh, campaign, so something completely new. Um, and, and here is why. Um, this is what um, uh, acquiring customers in a digital channel looks like. As your spend increases on the x-axis, your marginal cost, i.e. the cost to acquire one additional customer, goes up very quick, almost exponentially. Uh, that's particularly the case for companies that heavily rely on, on, on platforms like Facebook or Instagram. Uh, Facebook, for, <laughs> for what it's worth, is really, really good at masking this cost pattern. They will report at the average, so it will look a whole lot more flatter. Um, TV advertising fundamentally behaves differently. If something works on TV, let's say a particular network performs well, then you can reasonably expect to be able to spend quite a bit of money on it. So, so it's kind of, that's what it looks like for TV. By the way, I often get the question, of where do these points intersect? And so my observation, uh, albeit more anecdotal, is, is around $250,000. So if you're spending about $250,000 per month on Facebook uh, and you're not on TV yet, then you gotta pay attention because you probably should be on TV. Um, so, um, let me give you an example of this. Um, this is one of our clients, Turo. Uh, Turo is a peer-to-peer -peer car rental marketplace. It's kind of like an Airbnb for cars. Uh, it's fantastic, you just don't rent the average car. You can even kind of like rent exotic sports car on it, something I like to do. And, um, and so this is kind of the first few months that we worked with them. The, the blue bars are their monthly spent uh, on TV and then the green line is their CPI, so we want to bring that down. And so in the first few months, we kind of yeah, work hard, optimize on CPI. But then after that, we increase spend, as a matter of fact, double it, yet that CPI mostly stays flat. And so you could say, well, that's, that's good luck. Well, I will say, no, that's a job well done. That's not coincidence. That's because we've been driving a very hard fought uh, uh, optimization for scale. And to do so, we come kind of to the table with a whole slew of tactics and strategies uh, that allow us to to, to optimize a TV campaign, not just for performance, but actually for scale. We call it the science of scale. Some of them are listed here. Um, I spoke about this last year, so I actually don't want to spend much time on it. Um, I'm just going to put them out there. I'm just going to give you one, actually one of my favorite ones, uh, which is a, a fractional test, right? Let's say you would like to scale your TV campaign on NFL. Well, uh, purchasing a spot in game on NFL will set you back a cool two, three hundred thousand dollars. That's hardly something which we call a test for scale. That's too much money. So what we'll do instead is we'll buy a fraction of that audience. You can buy it in, in streaming, you can buy it on satellite like direct TV here. And so obviously you're not going to get the whole audience. You may be just the direct TV sliver of the country, which is maybe 10 percent. So you're going to pay less, but it's still going to yield enough data to actually suss out the performance of that potential true national big scale area. And so if it works for $15,000, you know, dropping a cool $200,000 feels a lot more stomachable, right? And so there's a whole bunch more. With sadness, I'm gonna flip through these slides because they're my most beautiful slides. <laughs> uh, duh, duh. Here is the 
summary again. So there you have it, take my word for it. Uh, but if you run an optimization for scale well, you can get to TV to a place where actually it will beat digital. And this is Turo again. And if I say beat digital, I mean both in the sense of running scale, right? The purple bars is TV spend, the blue bars are Facebook spend, so purple well above uh, uh, Facebook, um, but also in terms of performance. In this case, CPI, a lower CPI on TV, which is the red line than we see on Facebook. So that's great, that's exactly what we want, but that's not where it ends. Once a company kind of has wrestled its way through these performance optimizations, through the scale optimizations, which I just talked about, brand optimization sits on the horizon. And this is probably the hardest step because to truly harvest the TV beyond that direct response component, um, it requires that advertisers fundamentally change their buying strategy. They need to purchase airings or streamings which drive a much higher reach, a higher impact for all intents and purposes, kind of more of those brand-like buys because these investments are so much more than impressions. So I'll, I'll give you an example, or I'll demonstrate this with probably kind of the most extreme example, purchasing a spot on the Super Bowl, okay? If you, if you buy 30 seconds during the Super Bowl, well obviously you're gonna get that 30 seconds, but you're also gonna get the opportunity to present your product or your service to the largest TV audience ever. And by the way, a very captive audience. Guys like me probably watch the Super Bowl more for the ad than the game, right? You get an opportunity to signal prestige, to signal quality, it drives memorability, and you also get that social amplifier weeks before the game and weeks after the game. If you layer in these types of buys and you do this consistently, ultimately, your company as a whole will start to perform better. And it's best demonstrated or best evidence by an uptick in the blended sales conversion rate, which is kind of the yellow line that I show here. And I say blended. It's not just a sales conversion from TV, but it's the impact from TV on all, off TV on all your other channels. For example, your click-through rates on Facebook growing up, certain uh, uh, keywords on Google that weren't profitable all of a sudden becoming profitable. It is the halo effect, it is the brand effect of TV kicking in. Now, when we do such types of brand optimizations, remarkably, we go back to some of the oldest metrics in the world of TV advertising, reach and frequency, but we're gonna look at it through a digital lens. So here's an example from one of our other clients. Uh, this is Rotti's. Um, they're a San Francisco-based uh, shoe company. Um, they, uh, they sell uh, very fashionable, stylish flats. Uh, I, I hear they're also very comfortable. Um, and they're made out of recycled water bottles. Very cool. And so this is April of this year, just before we started their brand optimization. And what you can see here is their reach and frequency distribution uh, uh, just before. And so uh, this was put together uh, not using Nielsen data, but actually we use IP level data to do so. Uh, before we commit to the brand buy, we actually use set top box data, we use smart TV data, and we project where that reach and frequency histogram or curve will fall again. And of course we want it to go up, right? So before we even do anything, we know that we're heading in the right direction. Even if the short term metrics of making more expensive buys don't look so good, we know we're heading in the right direction. Now, I hammer on the concept of IP level data because that's critical. If you are still confined to Nielsen data, and I don't mean to say anything bad here, but if you're still confined to data that's collected from a small household panel and you need to calculate reach and frequency by looking at overlaps in such small household panels and looking at averages, you just don't have the right instrumentation. It's not gonna work. And so to do reach and frequency optimizations in linear, we're gonna look predominantly at smart TV uh, Visio being the 800 pound gorilla, we use them. We're about to expand that data set to about 18 million devices. By the way, that's just linear TV for streaming TV. It's even better. Um, for every single impression in streaming uh, delivered, uh, we have the user agent or the full IP address and some other data. And so, of course, we get even a whole lot more precise. Uh, this is actually probably also a good segue to talk a little bit more about streaming. If I had been up here on stage, well, I was up sta uh, on stage here last year, but the way I described streaming last year was different from how I would describe it this year. Um, streaming um, was always kind of been perceived as a, as a reach accessory. You know, in, you know, in particular, let's, let's find the people who have cut the cord. And that still holds, but
But uh, uh, in my observation, uh, 2019 has been the year where streaming has reached critical uh, mass in terms of viewership. Uh, streaming buys are now an absolutely equally good uh, vehicle to, to drive your scale, to drive a meaningful amount of impressions and spend. Um, so uh, the, the other thing I should point out is actually a lot of the streaming impressions are still going on TV. Uh, and so that's great. Now, like a good TV commercial, I have to say, but wait, there's more, right? Streaming TV is not just that additional reach. It's not just the newfound scale as of 2019. But if you kind of take a programmatic approach to it, it gives you so many other benefits that are digital in nature, right? The ability to target or hyper-target audiences, the ability to buy audiences across platform, the ability to run very complex uh, creative strategies, right? And we have 50 different creators all run at very particular times and instances. And so you can do all of that in a remarkable way while still holding on to that very first metric when you start a TV performance. I'm gonna come back to Turo. This is their performance on Pluto, a streaming platform, where they get a CPI which was an order of magnitude below what they paid in other places. And so streaming is for real. So the conclusion, because I think I'm up on my 10 minutes, uh, one, uh, lead TV with data and analytics. I mean, if your board or, or CFO has fallen out of love with you, it's, it's like makeup sex. I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean, this should be clear by now. Um, the other thing, especially for people who start with TV advertising, I would say don't get too hung up in the attribution or the measurement. Scale is often more important, okay? And the third piece, I think you heard me loud and clear, uh, as of this year, it's linear and streaming. Uh, and of course, streaming uh, is the future for all the benefits that I briefly mentioned. So um, that's it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Is it, is it Philippe or Philip? Uh, Philippe, but either way. Philippe. All right. I, I think I said your name wrong.